Welcome to the Leadership Lounge, a place to kick back and listen as our experts dissect some of the biggest questions leaders face today. I'm Emma Coombe, Leadership Advisor in our London office. Today, we're talking about how you can master the art of giving and receiving regular, effective feedback. As we approach the end of the year, no doubt many of you, like me, are getting lots of inbound requests for feedbacks and contributions to year-end appraisals. You're likely reflecting on your team's performance and how you can give feedback that will help your leaders develop and improve. These types of conversations aren't easy to navigate. So, what skills are important to hone when giving feedback? And what are some of the common pitfalls you may encounter while having these conversations? But it's not just about giving feedback. You also need to make sure you as a leader are getting the feedback you need to develop. How do you encourage honest, upward feedback? And what are the benefits when you act on this? Before we dive in, remember to share any burning questions you want our experts to answer by emailing redefiners at russellreynolds.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if you enjoy listening to our episodes, leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. So let's dive into the topic. First up, we'd like to welcome Dee Fitzgerald, Leadership Advisor in Russell Reynolds Associate Sydney office, into the conversation. Dee, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Hello, Emma. Delighted to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So Dee, it's important that leaders enter into feedback conversations prepared. How can leaders frame their feedback to ensure it's delivered effectively? I think the most critical skill for leaders giving feedback is framing the feedback around behavior rather than personality. For example, instead of saying you're such a live wire in that meeting, which refers to the personality trait extroversion, try saying, in the meeting I noticed that you dominated the conversation, which led to Sam and Chris not sharing their insights. This focuses on specific actions rather than making judgments about someone's character. It also reduces the likelihood of bias, since research shows women often receive more personality-driven or subjective feedback than men which can hinder their ability to make change and get ahead. By way of example, a female leader I know told me she received feedback that she was too soft and too hard in the very same day. I think often leaders give feedback focused on the personality trait instead of the specific action, uh, because it is less direct, it's easier to deliver. But of course, something focused on a broad personality trait is not specific, and it's very hard as an individual to know how to respond to it. And it just shows the importance of immediate feedback in the moment when somebody can really understand what they could do differently and why. And actually, it is kind of to give more direct feedback that isn't vague or too subtle, but it's in the moment, it's actionable, it's constructive, and it's helpful. We'd now like to welcome David Lang, Leadership Advisor from Russell Reynolds Associate Chicago office, into the conversation. David, welcome back to the Leadership Lounge. Thanks, Emma. Great to be here and looking forward to talking about this with you. David, giving feedback isn't easy and it's not always well received. What would your advice be if the person you're giving feedback to disagrees with you? You know, this happens more often than you'd think, Emma. Not everybody takes feedback in the way that you want them to receive the feedback, right? It has a lot to do with timing. It has a lot to do with the emotional state that the receiver may be in. And so you'll often have situations where the person will perhaps be listening, but not really taking it on board, or they will be in a situation where they may even actively resist. A lot of the key to delivering feedback and to overcoming some of the objections to feedback is to make sure that it's kind of a two-way conversation, that the person giving the feedback is listening for understanding, trying to understand the other person's perspective, trying to find some common ground, and looking at a way of perhaps even adapting the feedback or adapting the perception of a behavior based on a two-way conversation that the feedback opened up. In any event, It really is important that if the person giving the feedback has a strong point of view, something that they need to get across about a specific behavior, that they stick to their point of view in this particular regard. This doesn't mean being disrespectful. It doesn't mean not listening, but it does mean making sure that the person receiving the feedback hears a clear message about the issue at hand or the behavior at hand, and that they come to uh, an ability to have a conversation about resolving the issue. I think your emphasis on a two-way dialogue here, David, is key. And you see it in children's sports teams, for example, when they're having the talk at half time. It's very much uh, inviting everybody into the discussion. What do you think we could have done better? And the coach is immediately getting that engagement from the whole team because everybody's alert that they might be put on the spot about what they think could be done better and what has gone well. And to be honest, it's not that different as adults in the workplace. It transforms feedback from something judgmental into a genuine conversation about growth and understanding. 
And David, while leaders are more familiar giving feedback to their teams, it can be harder to provide feedback upwards. What's the best way to structure feedback conversations with those who are more senior? Yeah, upward feedback is always a challenge. And at the root of successful upward feedback actually is often the quality of the relationship between the manager and the direct report. If the direct report feels like there's an environment of what we would call psychological safety, in other words, the ability to have direct conversations with the manager without any consequences to having direct, respectful conversations, upward feedback actually becomes something that a direct report will offer regularly and proactively to their leaders. The best leaders actually ask for it. In any event, to do it well, if you are somebody needing to give feedback to somebody a bit higher in the hierarchy than yourself, often it's helpful to start with perhaps a leading question rather than a criticism. Try to figure out what's behind the leader's actions or motives. I love how you've highlighted the psychological safety piece there, David. We've spoken before on this podcast about just how important it is for leaders to feel secure enough to speak up. And a leader who has encouraged their employees to speak up and has created a safe space for them to do so is General Motors CEO Mary Barra. When she was appointed 10 years ago, she created a Speak Up for Safety program targeted specifically to encourage upward feedback from employees and leaders alike about safety concerns at the firm. And conversely, when this kind of culture doesn't exist, we so often see it leading to massive value destruction. For example, shock profit warnings because news hasn't traveled, proper feedback hasn't been able to go up through an organization. So the cost of getting this wrong is is massive. I'd now like to pivot the conversation a little. In this episode so far, the focus has been on how you can become more effective at giving feedback, whether that's to those reporting to you or upwards. But I'd like to flip it and delve a little deeper into how you can become better at receiving feedback to enhance your own development. In his book, The New CEO, authored by my RRA colleague, Ty Wiggins, PepsiCo CEO, Ramon LaGuata, shared that when you're the CEO, people carefully position everything they tell you. David, can you speak on this a little more? The idea of the way a CEO receives feedback is really, really critical. In fact, Ty will also say that the two things that are really true for a CEO, in fact, the only two things that are true, are that the coffee will always be hot and that they will have to work really hard at uncovering the truth in an organization. So it's even more important that CEOs really understand how to create a culture where proactively people can provide dissent, criticism, feedback directly up to the CEO so the CEO can learn about the things in the culture that are important to address. The best CEOs do this in a couple of different ways. They are frequent with this request for feedback. So they're doing it in a lot of different ways with a lot of different audiences at a lot of different levels. And they do it in the form of questions and probing and dialogue trying to get at the truth rather than just direct pointed statements. They're really trying to create environments where people will have conversations with them. And the more that they do this and the more that the organization sees that it's okay to constructively dissent, the more that this behavior becomes part of the culture. You're absolutely right, David. It's incredibly difficult to hear the truth as a CEO, but it makes a huge difference, in my opinion, if a CEO is actually physically present. So if it's a a multi-site business going out to the different locations, connecting with people on the ground. We've recently advised on a CEO succession for a business in major turnaround, and the predecessor had worked remotely really is a hangover from COVID, but for for many years, and some people didn't even know if they were real. The new CEO has already been to almost 50 different locations, has connected in a very direct, approachable way with people at all different levels of the organization. And the amount of feedback that they've got in such a short space of time, they've been enrolled for just a matter of weeks, is, is really remarkable. So to get unfiltered feedback, particularly as the CEO, it's something you need to actively seek out and be really intentional about. Dee, how else can leaders encourage honest upward feedback? To encourage honest feedback, leaders must start by cultivating genuine self-awareness. While many leaders believe they are self-aware, research shows it's actually quite rare, especially for those in positions of power. Status can create barriers, making it uncomfortable for people to offer constructive criticism. To combat this, try to establish multiple channels for regular feedback, such as 360 feedback, are open forums that remove the barrier between leaders and employees, additionally identifying trusted individuals who can provide candid insights and help action challenging feedback can be very helpful. Yeah, I think you you raise an excellent point here, Dee, and having multiple channels is really important, but having a feedback-rich culture should be the norm. 
uh, lots of people say that the best practice is that nothing comes as a surprise at a end of year review. So it should be part of a weekly or even daily routine. That being said, feedback shouldn't become so overplayed that it's gamified. And some organizations do talk about that happening now. So it's it's finding and striking the right balance. I'd now like to welcome our final voice into the conversation, Sylvia Largo, Leadership Advisor and Russell Reynolds Associates Barcelona office. Sylvia, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Sylvia, we spoke earlier about how leaders could give feedback effectively. What about how they can receive feedback constructively? Yes, definitely. The the active listening is one. Are you listening to understand or are you listening to reply? Are you fully present? Are you curious? Do you let your guard down? No. And definitely some basic questions like tell me more. They can go a long way, you know. Clarification questions. What do you mean? Can you give me an example? It's super important because some, sometimes we can get triggered and shut down and not explore what's being said. And we can assume that we understand what is being said. And that is the start of a misunderstanding. So that is super important. Just lean in, stay there, stay with the feedback, stay with the question, ask further questions for clarification. This is not being defensive, it's exploring together. I think that's incredibly relatable. We've all likely had at least one moment in our careers when we've been given feedback and immediately we prepare a response instead of truly absorbing what's being said. And I also think for the next generation growing up in a culture of seeking such frequent affirmation through social media and likes and the way that we now live, nurturing a feedback culture, actually creating the resilience to receive that feedback is not going to be altogether straightforward and something that we as managers, as leaders um, for that next generation need to really think about. Uh, I'll fully admit I'm pretty sensitive when it comes to developmental feedback. So I have to be really aware that as I enter these conversations, other people will be a lot more comfortable being direct than I am. And being able to to receive that that feedback is really important. It's much easier as part of a team project than than something personal. I think that's when it becomes more difficult. And and often we are working in teams, so so developing that team dynamic, nurturing it, is is really important. Sylvia, ensuring you receive well rounded feedback from a diverse group of people is key. How can leaders go about obtaining this feedback? I love this one, and I think of. The board of mentors concept, I absolutely love and generally I recommend to my coaches and people I provide feedback in our assessment exercises. It means that you select people both internally and externally, people that you admire and you respect for different reasons. So it's complementary profiles, maybe a couple internal, maybe a couple external, and they can broaden the mirror. The second one that comes to mind is team debriefs. I think it's super important after a big meeting, a big presentation, or the end of a project, to sit together with the team and discuss what went well and what could improve. They keep doing, start doing, stop doing. Thank you, Sylvia. And actually that that start and stop uh, and do more of discipline is really helpful across so many different parts of, of uh, a career. But regular team debriefs are critical. It speaks to the importance of immediacy, not waiting until year-end reviews when feedback can get diluted. In a lot of my team projects, we're looking at how we can set projects up for success. I ask our colleagues to think about what they want to get from this project from a developmental point of view. So, for example, what areas has somebody perhaps struggled on or fell down on in previous projects? How can we ensure this doesn't happen in this project? And because you've had that conversation about what a leader wants to work on up front, it becomes much easier to give and receive feedback. I read a quote recently from Patty McCord, the former chief talent officer at Netflix for over a decade. And she shared that when it came to reviews and feedback, simplicity is key. She said, when we stopped doing formal performance reviews, we instituted informal 360 degree reviews. We kept them pretty simple. People were asked to identify things that their colleagues should stop, start or continue. I think that's really a neat way of structuring feedback conversations. Dee, I'd like to turn back to you now. We've seen in our research that when a leader demonstrates willingness to take on feedback, it has a measurable impact on inclusion and increased feelings of belonging by employees. What are the other benefits when leaders choose to act on employee feedback? Emma, there's so many benefits, but one of the key benefits of feedback is that it fosters innovation in organizations. When I see leaders encourage feedback and input from their teams, 
It really empowers people to share new ideas and come up with creative solutions. This collaboration brings diverse perspectives and ideas, which are key to effective problem solving. Additionally, when people feel heard, they're more willing to take risks and experiment with new ways of working, fostering a culture of continuous innovation. In short, a strong feedback loop fuels creativity and has a measurable impact on business success. I think that's so critical, Dee. When leaders feel heard, they're much more likely to be creative and be unafraid to think outside of the box. I also think when feedback is acted on, you're much more likely to feel engaged with the organization and express loyalty. Feedback ultimately is a gift. You might not always like the gift, but it's an invaluable opportunity to see ourselves as others do and unlock our full potential as leaders and colleagues. And in today's world, where inclusion is more important than ever before, getting feedback from a wide range of individuals with views different to your own allows you to become a truly inclusive leader. Embrace feedback, both giving and receiving, with an open mind and a commitment to growth and watch how it can transform your organisation. So, our time in the lounge today has come to an end. I'd like to thank all our guests for sharing such invaluable insights. In 30 seconds, this is what we learnt. Effective feedback focuses on specific behaviours, not personality. Frame feedback constructively to enable growth and development, avoiding subjective or contradictory comments. Creating a culture of psychological safety is essential for encouraging honest upward feedback, which requires leaders to actively solicit input at all levels. Actively listening to feedback, asking clarifying questions and approaching it as a collaborative dialogue rather than defensively are critical skills for receiving feedback productively and integrating feedback into regular interactions rather than relying on annual reviews and seeking diverse perspectives through mentors or team debriefs helps leaders continuously grow and innovate. If you have any topics or burning questions you'd like us to cover in future episodes of Leadership Lounge, then get in touch. Email your questions to redefiners at russellreynolds.com. And if you've enjoyed listening to this episode, leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. You can find us on LinkedIn and follow us on X at RRA on Leadership. You can also find us on Instagram at Redefiners Podcast. And you can also now subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, goodbye.